Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Glad You Asked. We have no idea which episode number this is. <laughs> <laughs> could be 27, could be 7. Uh, how's it going? I'm Jeff Henderson, footwear designer. Oh, much more than that, Jeff. You've been on some uh, very community heavy involvement stuff lately haven't you uh we have been our footwear project with slate goods dot nyc um please check it out we're working with the boys and girls club of america covenant house and still strong foundation we got all the paperwork signed so we've been going in and trying to get a lay of the land and figure out how we can really help kids get into That's a some nice way to do it sounds like you're helping like two or three kids that's actually <laughs> the, the way you just brought that up actually there's like hundreds to even thousands of kids who will be affected and impacted by the amazing work that you're doing so hopefully hopefully knows? people will buy some shoes it's i mean it's similar to what times is we're just doing a little more of a premium work related uh pair of kicks so and I'm supposed to meet with some people from some of those companies to kind of give us an idea of how we can make this work better. So, a little side project, uh, helping the community, you know, no big deal. What's going nice. on with you, John Lopez? Well, I'm John Lopez, a sports photographer based in New York City. Now, now you're based in New York City, but you've been heavy on the travel. It's not even summer yet. You're supposed to be a summer basketball guy. Like, you're heavy <laughs> on the travel. What's going on? Well, uh, the Jordan Brand Classic was great. Uh, kind of kicked off things for me, and now I'm in the middle of the... Nike EYBL, which is awesome. Just returned from Indiana where we had session two. Um, and I'm actually really excited to kind of share. I'm working on a recap for that right now. I can't wait to share that on my social channels and on my website. So be on the lookout for that. You're going to have all of that. And did I, if I'm following your social media, you won something here locally in the city, <laughs> something very prestigious. This was is it true. Not? This is true. Prestigious indeed. My team at the Terminal 23 League. Uh, brought home that championship, so it's really amazing. And as a as a prize, not only do I get the trophy, which is cool, uh, I also get this amazing twenty four by twenty four inch print by Natural, uh, which is an amazing piece. And I'm really proud to hang that up on my wall um, as soon as I find some space. <laughs> now, now on your squad, you've had a kind of dream team of people because I, I I think Alex was on that team. I think Trey was on that team. This is true. This is true. I, I had to bring you know the competition was stiff. You know, we had an up and down season. <laughs> I think going into the season, we might have been the heavy favorites to win the championship. And then we proceeded to lose four consecutive <laughs> games. And everybody wrote us off. And then we just kind of turned it up. You know, I got a bunch of my uh, former Boy Club guys and some of my college friends, you know. I had to bring, I had to bring in the, ring, the ringers to get the job done. So in the end, it all worked out. So well, I think I was the GM of the year. If that, if GM of the year? Is that what happened? Is that what happened? <laughs> well, so I think uh, we're going to move on to actually what today's topic is about. And I figured one thing we'd start off with, but this is a slight digression is, because I'm going to your website, and I'm basically going to lift one of your images. Okay. And I found the Carmelo image. Part for the course. And I heard a little conversation, I think it was on Jesus and Mero. Somebody actually said, yo, would you be in support of Carmelo, LeBron, Dwayne Wade joining Chris Paul as a Clipper. And I was like, whoa, I'm an Ohio fan. I'm a Cleveland Cavalier fan. <laughs> but that might be kind of nice to watch. I don't know if they'd actually win. You have thoughts on that? That's kind of crazy. I, I think, <laughs> I mean, listen, they're all friends. They're all getting up there in the age anyway. Yeah, Although LeBron playing like he's still 25. He's still scary. He's still scary. He's still <laughs> but, uh I'd, I'd love to watch that. That's kind of that'd be interesting. I just think, and there's also a partial like you know because Phil Jackson said a few choice things about a posse and the way he's been treating Melo. Mm -hmm. I would love for those guys to be on the same team. And when they play the Knicks, one give the ball to Carmelo to score a hundred <laughs> as they run the triangle. I think that would be. <laughs> I think that would be. <laughs> I would just like to see that. I would just like to see that. You know I mean, what? I would too. And, and you know, listen, I, I am a Knicks fan, and I, I don't like what's how they treating my man Melo. But uh, I, I would love to see. It. And the, the truth is, they will only play the Knicks twice a year because it doesn't look like for the foreseeable future they'll be meeting them in the seven game series <laughs> in the NBA Finals. So. Probably not going to happen. Probably. <laughs> Porzingis might not show up to any more meetings ever again. Porzingis ever again. Porzingis might become a Clipper. <laughs> <laughs> he might be. He might be. <laughs> six man of the year. Six man of the year. So let's get to the real work. Uh, what I wanted to show today um, is a little bit based on a project that I worked on for our people at Il Posto Acato. So what I'm going to do is start out with, I'm going to actually steal this image from John Lopez. Mm -hmm. So per your earlier information of put a watermark 
the reason you put a watermark because I can't actually steal this image because John Lopez has some high definition like security on here. But I could also what Control Shift Four do a screen grab, and I like I'm stuff. just basically stealing. But you got to you got to you got your watermark on there, so I can't steal it all together. So you know, <laughs> after I've conveniently stolen John Lopez's imagery, I'm just gonna go into the wonderful uh, Explore or Finder. Explore like I'm still in a using my Mac. Using my PC. I'm going to grab said image, bring it into my Adobe Illustrator, like so. And then we're going to do some fun with it. Because I'm going to show what I do with Image Trace. So I use Image Trace a lot, turns out. More because I'm trying to figure out how to work with image images in different ways to kind of get them there. So this is John Lopez's high resolution enough image because, you know, I just did a screen grab. But sometimes you want to grab images and whether it's a cartoon style or a mosaic or something that sort of gives you a little light to use them for different reasons. Well, I actually wanted to use something for embroidery. Um, so you can't just use like the image. And what happens is if you want to do embroidery, they'll charge you to do this um, off an image. So you actually want to do it yourself. And it's a couple tools that already exist. Is there a certain name that you'll find on an invoice that they call this? Um, oh, to do the uh, image trace? Right. So do image trace. call it image trace or do they call it, like when you, when you have to pay for it if you're trying to get Oh, 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 oh. Uh, they'll digitize. They'll say they're digitizing the image. So if you can give them vectors that they don't have to digitize, your life will be much easier. Um, okay. They'll still do a little bit of detail with it and I'm still talking to my girl at Emily and I'll explain who Emily is later because she did a bang up job on this project. But I'll show you here exactly what I gave her. But the example is, so I'll take this image, I'll embed it, and then the image is actually placed in the file. If it's not embedded, what happens is it's actually a file that the Adobe uh, the Illustrator file will go reach and grab. That way it doesn't make the file heavy. But if you don't have it in there and you're sending the file to somebody else, it actually won't be in there. So it keeps the file small on your computer, but you can't use it any other way. Um, but I needed to actually do the image trace. So now that I've selected the image, I'll go to image trace. So you'll see we have a few options. There's default, which is usually the last thing we did. High fidelity photo, which will actually take it and make the image so tight that it'll actually, it'll kill my computer, I've used it before. As we know, um, and maybe you don't know, but I've killed this computer doing lots of things. <laughs> it can't handle everything. But you take it and you can do things in terms of, let's make it three colors. So we're gonna take this image, it's actually processing everything, and I'll show you the ones that I've done before. And it's actually creating vectors from this image into three different colors, just to make a file that you can actually use. And so depending on your needs, or whether it's just an artistic visual you're after or whether you're after something as intense as what I'm doing with um, getting embroidery done, you may decide, you know what, I want to go heavy, I want to go high. So this is actually the file you get. So right now it's still an image, but I can go through and, oh, I'm sorry, I'll go and expand it way up here. And you can see these are actually the lines that break up. And now when they're in this form, they can be expanded to any size, is that right? You can do whatever you want. You can, well, the nice thing, so I'll ungroup these. And right now, uh, you can see, I'll release compound path. And right now, every section is different. So I can actually go through and let's say, let's just make it white. So you can see, I can play with the colors. And the nice part about this now that it's three colors, and though it's broken up in different places, place, different pieces, I can go through and select same fill and stroke and collect the same pieces together. So that way I can make them all one color, I can change it to, now let's see, I have it in less sort of like a blue, uh, gray, I can change it to, you know, he could be in Nick's colors, I could do blue and orange, I could do blue and red when he goes to the Clippers, you know, you can just play with different <laughs> things, not that he's going to the Clippers, but that just gives you a way. And because, and if we go back a little bit, take a few steps back of what we have, uh, it's gonna, we do all that, so I'm not going to do all that. Oh, there's the image. Again, under image tracing. We then get different methods of how we play with it. So here's one where it was 16 colors. So it's actually tighter. So it still looks like an image, but as you can tell, there's still vectors. These are vectors. Wow. Exactly. So now, if I'm going to get this embroidered or do something detailed with it, it's a little easier to work with. And they still may be heavy, but it's not like you have to go embroider a real photo. 
So and this is not um, this is not the high fidelity option. This is just sixteen colors. Right, that's just sixteen colors. So you can get from a distance. It actually looks pretty tight. Uh, and as you get closer, so here's just different versions. Um, here's just black and white. And again, those are all vectors. So those are all lines you can kind of play with. And that file must be huge. Like I, I, I'm counting just on top of my head. I'm counting like a million lines. Right there. I just a million? Thought. Did you count that right? There? That's, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so yes, the files get huge. They get heavy. It's nothing you want to have tons of. Uh, and it can slow drag your computer down. But it's just one of those. Now I can take that. And part of it being heavy is based on when you want to actually do something really detailed, uh, which I'll show you uh, what kind of came of it uh, in this project I had. So good friends at Il Posto Acanto. Um, Beatrice said she wanted to do, which this is the St. Mary of um, Guadalupe. She saw this with somebody had it on a jacket. She wanted to do it, and she said it was kind of pretty. She couldn't tell what it was, but she loved it. It was embroidery. I was like, ooh, embroidery. I don't know how to do it. I don't really use embroidery, but let's figure it out. So I grabbed the uh, image um, off the internets and said, all right, this is what the painting actually looks like. It's a beautiful painting, all the details there, but can you imagine trying to embroider like every little bit and piece? So what I had to do is basically use image trace and get to the point where now I have all the pieces here. So I went through and actually highlighted in something large the stars that are actually could fade out on the rope. So I made those a little more intense. And this is actually 16 colors. So then I had to go find somebody who could actually embroider this. So I went to the good peoples at um, New York Embroidery Studio. It's on um, 36 and 8. Wonderful people, amazing work. And said, can you do this? Of course, they were like, sure, no problem. And so I saw that they did a lot of fashion work. They're heavy during fashion week, so it gets busy. But when it's not fashion week, they can crunch stuff out quickly. So Emily works at uh, New York Embroidery Studio. Shout out, because she really helped me. was like, yo, give me the file. Let me see what I can do with it. Not a problem. Um, actually, because I had already broken it down, then it just became a matter of like, what um, what threads do you want to use just for the embroidery, which I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. So we actually went through and picked out the threads that I'll show you here. She was kind enough, like, after we picked them out, I was like, yo, why are you doing this? I'm traveling. I was in LA. It's like, can you take pictures of the process? Because I would just love to see it. So she actually like took amazing, beautiful photography. I mean, it's not John Lopez worthy, but <laughs> she's trying to get there. And then she showed, this is actually working. So you can actually see 16 laid out as it goes through and stitches on here and i'll show you the like quick video she sent um and that's the that's the significance of the 16 colors yes so you can see how when i broke it down each thread and it and how it embroiders now is that a maximum number or a standard number it's what they have uh they can do like 30 color embroidery they can put it on two machines get it going like they can do whatever you want um the reality is this sat on the machine for two straight days. Wow. It was that big. Because this is a two, it's a 24 inch. It's the back of a parka jacket. So it filled up the whole thing. And you can see sort of the finished goods of all the details. It's all embroidered. And so the machine is kind of getting all of this information from those vector files. Yep. So when you said you tightened up those stars, did you actually have to recreate those stars? Or were you moving... Uh, like using the pen tool so like no actually I mean the reality is I just quickly went in and drew and I did it once where I just made one with just lines I just copied and pasted and just dropped them on oh, all but the you, places so you drew that from scratch because yes. the other was blurred exactly exactly and I wanted those to stand out um, and give a hard stitch where some of these they just sort of blend things so they just yep. sort of fade into each other and again I didn't go through the detail I think after I did it I realized that some of the uh, threads that we chose were a little light, so you can see how they show up. But I kind of like the effect you got when you have a jacket. And this is what I requested. I was like, yo, can you make something? This is what I want it to look like. So they went through, and she built it. And I think the part that's the most interesting, and this one, when you do a project, you know how you f find out that like it was all worth it? Well, so then I gave the jacket to Julio, her uh, husband, who actually did this as a surprise. Because she said she wanted it, completely forgot about it, and... I don't want to say he forgot something, but there was a day he didn't remember and was like, yo, I got to make it up. Remember that jacket thing she wanted? I was like, yes, I do. So we went and got, I was like, yo, but you got to get video because I want to see what it looks like. So he made this video of her opening the jacket, opened the box for the first time. Did you design that box? No, that was all Julio. He did his <laughs> magic. He did his magic. As you can see. 
her face is the part. <laughs> <laughs> she was super excited. She completely <laughs> forgot that she even asked for it. And so, also, what it says on the inside is never trust a skinny cook. That's her uh, tagline. So, this side little project we sort of worked on became something extra. And because we have all of the artwork sitting at the embroidery studio, we sort of said, you know what? Other people are going to like it. We're not going to give them the fishtail. But we actually have put it in like nice things. So, you can actually buy one. Um, or nice things at NYC. We're going to put them on uh, this M65 jacket wow. and you can get it embroidered yourself. So That is amazing. So there's something, that, some clear things here that I think you might be skipping around. I just, <laughs> I just had some questions. Like you just happen to know this person named Emily who happens to be at this embroidery shop. Talk to me a little bit about networking and the importance of these yeah. kinds of things and how you kind of build these networks with ra a random amazing designer <laughs> knows what the hell 16 Colors is, an illustrator, and happens to know somebody who can actually make this stuff. Like, how do you, how do you put all these pieces together? Right. So I'm sure, you know, like, the beauty of living in New York City is there's a ton of creative people, and you also get the value of, like, asking another creative person, where'd you find this? How'd you do this? So a gentleman by the name of Peter Giatane, he, I was working with him on a project, and I said, yo, I need to do this embroidery project. Do you know the place? He was like, no, but the place I work at, upstairs, there's an embroidery studio, and I see some really amazing things go in and out. So let me send you that information. So while he's doing that, it takes him about two days for him to get back to me. I just start Googling like embroidery studios in New York, and I found the one I thought was actually good. It was New York Embroidery Studio. He texts me that day. It's the same place. I'm like, all right, so kind of works out karma is a good thing but i want to check it out so we actually go and look and see like what's at the studio what does it look like before we pay like how good are they and i brought my file with me and showed her what i was looking for and i also asked yo can i see what's going on back there because i don't know like maybe they're talking a good game but the work's not excellent they just let, did you let you in the back room she let me in the back room like you we literally went up i took my son we went up to xavier went with me we went up to the sixth floor i think we walked into like this little cage area that was away from everything and she walked me through things. I was like, well, can I actually see the embroidery? Because I'm curious as to how they do it. She walked us back there past about 30 other projects. We saw some amazing executions and treatments that I learned more about, oh, this is what I might do in the future, but let me see the machinery that I'm about to use for it. They showed us hats, they showed us dresses, they showed us everything. So merely like going in and seeing, and now I, like because the work was done so well, I probably won't even look for somebody else. And I don't really care what it costs because the work was done so well. Um, but I now know exactly what to expect in the world of embroidery. So if I bump into somebody else that has embroidery, I'll go check it out, see what it's like. But this was such an art piece as opposed to, yeah, I just want my name on a hat that I needed somebody high end. So again, New York City is full of people who are doing things at a high end. You just have to like knock on the door and say, yo, can you walk me back there so I can see what it looks like? Emily took care of us. That's no amazing. doubt, no doubt. Julio That's picked amazing. it up and was excited. He texted me. I was in LA. He was like, yo, the jacket's crazy. I was like, all right, cool. Send me a picture. Um, but it was really nice, really nice. That's nice. amazing, man. So that is all I have for the day. This is uh, Glad You Asked Dot Today. If you have any questions, you hit us up. You want to see more. You want to know more about the jacket, embroidery, using the image trace tool. Now that my screen's all clean, I can actually see what's going on. Uh, any Knicks conversation, I'm not really interested in hearing Knicks conversation unless you're bashing the Knicks. Though John Lopez may not want to hear that. Please add it on. Uh, all good, all good. So thank you very much. And you peace see the out. email, hit us up. Yo, at glad you asked. I'm going to let John hit the get out because I'm going to hit the wrong thing to uh, shut it down. What do we All press? Right. What do we press? We out of here. Peace. <laughs>